You are listening to the Franchise Growth Catalyst Podcast with Angela Cote. Now, go be awesome. Hey there, Angela Cote here, and I am back for another episode of the Franchise Growth Catalyst Podcast. Now, it is May 5th. Cinco de Mayo of 2020. And we are almost maybe about two months into being quarantined due to the COVID pandemic. And during this time, I think it has caused a lot of people to reflect on their, their work situations and or they've been laid off or furloughed from their jobs. And they are looking at the opportunity to become a franchisee. I'm hearing this from both my clients as uh, franchisors, as well as franchisors in my network, uh, all the roundtables I've been fortunate enough to be able to host and hear, you know, this wide range of, of franchise companies all saying pretty similar thing that the franchise prospects and the, the leads uh, have increased. And I think it's really because, like I said, people are thinking about what they're doing in their life and looking at other opportunities, maybe realizing, you know, I've always wanted to do this other thing and now's the time to think about it. It's forcing them to slow down and, and think about it. So I get a lot of people asking me, because I talk a lot about how important it is to get the right fit with a franchisee. And I say, well, there's a process you need to go through. And people say, well, how do you combine or balance, I guess is a better way to put it, the the combination of of selling the opportunity and vetting the the franchise candidate. And the first thing I would say is that it, I really don't see it as a sale. I see it as more than anything, a situation where we are lifting the hood on whether or not this is a fit. Does it make sense for us to partner up? Us, me, the franchisor, and you, the prospective franchisee. And a lot of franchisors then say, well, when they haven't done it enough or whatever, they're like, well, how do you know? And I say, well, we've got a process in place. And they're like, well, what does that mean? So, you know, we've got everything from an initial call, which you use to sort of screen just whether or not it's worth having a longer conversation um, through the process to, you know, showing the FDD all the way through to discovery date and then potentially signing. And throughout that process, there's a lot of opportunity to ask the questions to surface the red flags that are going to give us the indicator that this person is not going to be happy as a franchisee. And on the calls that I get on with my clients and participate in with candidates, I'm very transparent about the fact that this is not us trying to sell you this opportunity. This is about us making sure that you are going to thrive as a franchisee of this business. And there's some things that we know, some traits that we know franchisees, the high performing franchisees have, and we can go through those. And if you don't have those traits, it doesn't mean anything bad. We're not judging. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about whether or not you fit those traits and whether they're a, a, you know, in your, in your DNA. And so it's really helping the franchise candidate understand that. And I think by putting that out there initially and being really transparent, we actually give the, the position, we kind of come into almost a position of strength. Like, we're not going to move forward if this isn't a fit. And, but secondly, we don't want them to come to this like an interview where they can say anything to get their foot in the door and have you award the franchise. That doesn't help anyone. What would help everyone is if we help them see that these are the traits that we're looking for. And if you have those traits, you'll do well. So it doesn't benefit you to pretend you have those traits right now because you'll invest all this money and you, trust me, will not be happy when you can't get this business profitable because you don't have the right DNA. Again, it's not a judgment. You might be better suited to working in a corporate environment and all your life you thought that you would like to own your own business, but didn't realize what it really entailed. And we're going to help you see that. Um, you might be more suited to a more established brand. If you're if you're an emerging franchisor, you've got a lot of things to still figure out. As much as you think you have a proven concept, even if you've got like three locations, 
I'm sorry to say, but you really don't actually have a proven concept yet. You've you've got some proof of concept, but really, you know, it it, it requires going into different types of markets, different types of cities and states and regions and playing around with different things to figure out really, you know, what exactly is the perfect model here. And you may have a pretty good sense of that, but to say that you've got a proven concept after only one or two units, I think is not really a fair way to put that. So um, it's really important that we start out by approaching the process of recruiting and, and taking a person through the process with the right mindset, the mindset that this is not like, oh, I sold it, I'm winning, check mark, I rock. It's if we can determine that we are a fit, then there's a check mark. Or it's also a check mark if we determine we are not a fit. Because I would we'd rather determine that somebody is not a fit before we sign this big agreement and before they invest their life savings and before they're counting on me to help them become profitable when I can never get them there because they don't have the right traits. So you're starting to wonder probably, well, what are the traits? Which I will go through in a minute. I've got 10 uh, traits that I've come up with or success factors that we should be thinking about for any brand. It pretty much is universal for franchisees in general. So whether you are a cleaning service business, a fitness business, a wax bar, or a termite removal business, these are some things that are universal traits. In addition to that, there's lots of other questions that you can ask. And I have I have various resources um, that I use for my clients in this realm that really help us dig into the behavioral traits. And in addition to that, I'll give a shout out to Zorical profiles. There's other profiles out there that you can use. Um, I, I know that a lot of people love Zorical. Shout out to Rebecca and Monet for that. And so there's also profiles you can add into the mix. So there's a lot of things you can do to do your best to try to figure out if a franchisee is going to be a fit for your business. Now, regardless of what you do, there's always that uh, that, uh, possibility, I guess, that the franchisee is going to exhibit traits after you've brought them into the process uh, or sorry, into the, um, onto the team as a franchisee. We never know for sure, but there are things that we can do to, to do our best to really understand whether a person is going to be a good fit. And so these are things that people say, well, when do you ask this? We're in the process. And so my recommendation would be to have an initial call. And even before that, I think one of the things that gets missed a lot is that people pinch the funnel at the top by trying to, to qualify franchisees before they even you know, put their email address in on your franchise website lead capture form. So my recommendation would be to make sure that you don't pinch the funnel at the top, get their initial the, the, the lead, have a quick call with them, have a screening call. If you want, you can hire somebody to help you with that. Um, as long as they have the right skills and, and follow, you know, follow the, the, uh, the script and the process for that. But once you get into the process of having conversations with them, then these traits that I'm talking about, you can work on asking the questions throughout the process to find out whether these they have, you know, these traits. And I would actually probably do this earlier in the process than later, but there are other questions you can ask after you've gone through these things. So this, this is my recommendation. If you don't know who your prospect really is and you're totally stumped on how to find them, that's another whole podcast. I'll save that for another time, but we're assuming right now that you've got somebody that is interested and you are going to you know, have these conversations with them. So you've done the initial vetting. I think the very first thing I would ask in that initial call is really make sure they understand the financial commitment and make sure that they are are worth talking to on that level. If they are far off on that, then there's no point in going to call number two. But it is a good idea to have a plan in place for how you can help them with getting funding. So even in that first call, if you're having the conversation about the initial investment and they're like, oh, I don't have that money, make sure that you explore a little bit with them. They might have like an uncle or somebody else in their network who would want to invest in them. And then that person would be like in the background as maybe a silent partner or advisory type partner. And this person could be the frontline operational franchisee. So I, I like to make sure that on that first call, we 
we make sure that the financial situation makes sense for us to continue having a conversation and, and also help them think openly about other opportunities to get that financial support um, before we, we, you know, exhaust them out of the funnel. So assuming they make it to the next stage, uh, we need to at some point start to get into the DNA. So I'm going to rip through the DNA of a franchisee and, and talk about ways that you can uncover whether or not they are a fit for these things. And I may also throw in a couple other little tidbits at the end here, but let's see as we go, because if you've listened to my podcast before or heard me do videos or anything, I'm a big believer in doing something is better than nothing. So I'm not overly prepared here. I am just sharing with you my my way of doing things and hopefully providing you lots of value. All right. So let's jump into the 10 traits. So one of the very first things I would, as I mentioned, is make sure that they're financially prepared. So does do they understand that they need to have capital, working capital for probably at least the first six months, but ideally around 12 months? We don't want them to be at month two or three. And if things aren't going as well as we thought, and we need, to, we need them to spend a little extra on marketing or whatever that is, we don't want them to be running out of capital. So the ideal situation is find out if they've got you know, that working capital. Do they have a secondary income in the household, typically a spouse? Or do they have savings that they could access if they have to? And are they willing to tip, uh, dip into those savings? And so this can be covered on the franchisee application, but also something to discuss at length, you know, throughout the process and in initially is, is really ideal. And so help them understand that you're asking them this to look out for them. You're not, you're not being, um, you're not scrutinizing them. You are helping them so that they would be able to you know, get to the stage they would, that they would be breaking even and then profitable. Next up is being systems oriented. For this one, what I would do is I would take a good look at their resume of experience and look at where they seem to excel the most. So if they excelled in an environment where they followed systems, such as like a government job or middle management or, um, you know, anything that they, where they had like an established, maybe, maybe in a retail situation where there was an established system, you know, that's probably a good sign if they thrive in that kind of situation. So try to find out where they, what kind of, what was their favorite job they've had in their life? You know, and did they have to follow systems in that favorite job? You can ask them if the expectations in the, in the roles they had, um, you know, whether they felt like they were squeezed because of that or whether it helped them, you know, feel more comfortable. And so, and, Directly ask them in the past, where have you had to follow a system? What have you had to, you know, what was it like? And try to uncover, you know, with lots of questions, what it was like for them. And so try to also prompt them to maybe talk about opportunities where they had to be creative and entrepreneurial. And you can maybe say this in a way that makes it sound like that's a good thing and look for signs of whether they're getting excited to always find new ways to do things, because that could be a red flag. Again, really help them understand this is not about being right or wrong. It's about ensuring that they'll be able to thrive and be profitable in an environment that is systems oriented, especially if it's a more established brand. Throughout the process, if the candidate is regularly asking questions like, can we, you know, do we have to wear that uniform? Do we have to follow the company hours? Do we have to use your decor? You know, do we have to wrap the car, or purchase supplies from you, whatever? Keep an eye out for that because that's usually a bit of a red flag that they're thinking that they want to do it a different way. So next up is on the flip side of the systems is we are looking for a little bit of entrepreneurialism. You know, we're talking about having a propensity to see where improvements can be made and be able to problem solve and ultimately, you know, help them be more profitable because they can handle that. You know, people on the front line often have the best ideas. You've probably heard that the Big Mac was an idea that came from a franchisee, but we just need to make sure that they understand that the, that most modifications to the operational system are going to need to be approved by the franchisor. So again, I would take a look at their resume of experience and see where they seem to excel. And you could give a, an example of a creative problem that they may, de may need to solve in the business and listen to how they would solve it and see if it makes sense that they have in that they're comfortable with that little bit of, you know, having to problem solve. Next up, brand loyalty and passion for the brand. And included in this is respect for the founder. If a franchisee doesn't 
just absolutely love the brand, it's going to really make it hard for the franchisee to build and grow the business. So be leery of a franchisee who is out there shopping around for franchises primarily based on the potential ROI. If they're doing that, it's going to be a lot more challenging for them to attract customers and clients and inspire employees if they're just not excited about what they're offering. So ask them, this is what you need to do is ask them, what excites you about our brand? Look for lukewarm answers. If they say, well, it looks like a good financial opportunity, I'd be a little bit nervous about that. Ask them what, why the brand attracted them in the first place to see if there's something about the brand. Or again, is it just because it looks like a, a financially good opportunity? And I would get examples of their engagement with the brand. Are they a customer uh, currently? Are they a client? What was their first uh, interaction and why? And why do they think that this is a good opportunity? Next up is family support. And this is an interesting one because it's something that often gets overlooked. And that is that starting a new business, even with proven systems, is still a really big deal for most franchisees. And it brings with it a lot of weight on the franchisee's shoulders. The long days, the financial burden, and the pressure to perform all contribute to the franchisee's stresses that they undergo. And so the franchisees that are most successful are the ones who have family members supporting them through the ups and downs of being a business owner. And we've seen family support show up from anything, anything from emotional support and like pep talks to financial security, you know, having members who will jump in and work in the business for them or work with them on the business and do whatever it takes to help them keep the business stable and get the business growing. Probably one of the best ways to assess whether the franchisee has family support is to simply ask them whether there's anyone else in the family who would be involved in the business. So from there, you can Involve that person in the conversations, bring that person into the conversations and make sure you know that you do see that they are supportive of this situation. So that is one of the, the key points to use within ensuring that they've got family support. Next up is leadership skills. Oh, I see this one missed a lot. You have to make sure that the franchisee has the ability to lead and inspire their team. You know, they they are going to be working oftentimes with frontline staff and entry level staff. And this is not always easy. Let me tell you, as a franchisee of 18 years of a retail franchise, we had to figure out how to motivate entry level staff to actually show up to work and to work hard and to want to you know use their passion for the brand as well. So I would find out with regards to leadership, I would find out what experience does the candidate have as a leader in their past career roles? Have they managed people before, run any events, handled any departments, you know, past entrepreneurial experiences as long as they're not too entrepreneurial? And I would dig deep into what they want to be in the franchise if they haven't? Why do they want to be in the franchise if they do have an entrepreneurial spirit? Is it like they just want, they they want to be a little bit creative, but they need some support? Well, that might be okay. But if they say, well, I've always wanted to own my own business so I could do what I want. Well, obviously that would be a red flag. Another thing to find out about leadership skills is ask what they do in their spare time. You can keep the keep the questions open-ended, but ask them things like, what have you done for community involvement? Have you ever done anything, you know, any sat on any boards or attended any networking events? Maybe they volunteered on a parent advisory council at their kid's school, or they've coached on a sports team, or they've started something from scratch. So watch out for those leadership. We want them to have some leadership skills for sure, as long as they understand the value of the team, which is exactly the next point I was going to bring up is that are they collaborative and team oriented? Because just like on a sports team, franchisees often need to accept decisions that are for the greater good of the overall company. And sometimes they need to exercise patience because things move a lot slower in a franchise system, especially in a more established system, due to the fact that decisions affect other business operators, other franchisees who have invested their life savings into the brand. So there's a lot of value in the co collective opportunities in a franchise because you have a lot of business owners operating the same business. And if they're not going to play by the team rules, then you are going to be missing out on that ability to leverage and they might as well start their own business. So the way to find out if they're team oriented is to 
Find out if they are more of an independent decision maker or collaborative. So you could specifically ask them when you need to make a big decision, do you have like a strong instinct or do you prefer to collaborate to figure out the best answer? If they tell you that they like to just make the decision, that might be a bit of a red flag. Ask them, what does it mean to you to be on a team and listen carefully to their answers? Ask them if they like what they like about being on teams. What do you like about it? And see what they say. You can also get past experiences, um, work experiences as well. Uh, find out if they've been on a sports team. Maybe they were in a sorority or a fraternity, done extracurricular activities or volunteer activities where they worked on a team. And if they were on a team, what made them move on? Next up is sales oriented. And this is a doozy. This is a key trait. This is probably one of the biggest ones that gets missed and causes the most frustration. Contrary to popular belief, I like to say franchising is not turnkey. The problem with calling a franchise turnkey is that it sets up this false expectation that the business is going to run. You're just going to flip on the on open sign and sales are going to come pouring in without much effort just because it's a franchise. People naturally think that. So you've got to be real careful about that. And in most franchises, the franchisee plays a key part in generating sales for his or her business. And this can be anything from them out there attending networking events in their local community to hosting a charity event to drum up business to, you know, whatever it takes, knocking on doors or whatever. And the most successful franchisees, the highest performing franchisees are the ones who take initiative to build their business as opposed to expecting customers and clients to come flocking in because of like a few social media posts or something done by the franchisor with the group fund. So how to figure out if a person is sales oriented? It's not necessarily that they have to have had sales experience. We're going to look more at their traits. The traits of natural salespeople include everything from being extroverted, being social, being dynamic, energetic, confident, hardworking, and having active listening skills. So if you see any of those traits, that's a good sign that they are probably going to be able to be sales oriented if they haven't in the past, in their past uh, careers and, and experiences. Maybe straight up ask them, what experience have you had with having to generate sales or sales type initiatives? Ask them, what would you do if you had to get business through the door? If you open this business and you can't figure out clients aren't coming to you, what would you do? What, what kinds of things do you envision? And so watch here for insecurity and shyness. Now they may say, I'm not exactly sure, but if you give me ideas, I, you know, would like to go do them. That can still be a bit of a red flag. Make sure that they really understand. At the end of the day, it's going to be on them to get people in the door and that as the franchisor, you'll support them and there's an ad fund, but ultimately it's up to them. And be careful uh, not to assume though, there are some traits that can indicate a good salesperson that are less obvious, such as having a little quiet confidence instead of sort of a more energetic and outgoing confidence. A quiet confidence can work as well. Um, good self-esteem is a good trait being genuine and being authentic. Those are other good traits that fall within the traits of a salesperson that might not be as outwardly seen. Next up, and we're at the second last one here, is being community-oriented. Franchisees that are already comfortable getting out in their community just do such a much better job of maximizing the opportunity. And that can be anything from like calling in favors from media connections that they know to creating strategic partnerships with fellow local business owners who want to help each other get business. So to find this out, I would ask again, what do they do in their spare time and find out if they're involved in any groups or clubs? And, and who do they know in their community that they could maybe leverage? Do they know any other business owners? Do they know any media people? Do they know any politicians or local celebrities? Find out if they are, if they don't have any connections like that and they're not community oriented, it's going to be a lot more work for them to get, you know, their business brand built up in their local community. Again, keeping in mind that when you talk to them about this, it's not about an interview. It's about making sure that, Hey, candidate, are you going to be comfortable? Cause this is what's going to take. This is what you're going to need to do. And if you're going to invest all this money, let's make sure that you feel like you can do this. All right. Are you ready for the last one? This is the 10th trait in my list. And this one is grit. 
At the end of the day, of the day, even in a franchise, as I said before, a business owner typically needs to really have hustle, go out and, and drum up business and work long hours to get their business up and running, and then even to maintain it um, at a decent growth rate. It ties back to that bust, busting myth statement that I say that contrary to popular belief, franchising is not turnkey. Having to work hard is, is commonly overlooked because people think that proven systems are going to mean that everything just flows. Whether a franchise or an independent small business, there's always going to be challenging times that require a dig in approach. And trust me, I've been there 18 years in a franchise company where it was an iconic Canadian brand. And we did not just sit there with the lights on waiting for customers to come in. We did not. Franchisees that don't have grit tend to be the biggest complainers and drainers of resources on a franchise system. So how do you find out if they've got grit? Because they can tell you they have grit, you know, till the cows come home. But here's some ways. Find out what their five-year vision would be if they become a franchisee and assess whether it seems realistic. If they say to you, oh, within five years, I hope I'm, you know, taking XX amount of salary and I'm retired and I'm living, you know, in a different city, but my business runs by itself. That may be a little bit unrealistic for your business. You, you might know whether it is or not. Um, but ask them, how many, how many hours do you actually envision working weekly? You could ask them initially, what do you envision? And then in the long term, what do you envision? And see what they say. If they say, well, I'm, I'm used to like a 40 hour work week, I'd be like, oh boy, that might not be good. You will probably have to work a lot more than that initially to get this thing off the ground. You can also get examples of times or work experience with experiences where they had to put in above average effort and find out how it went and read their reaction. And if they're like, oh, it was brutal. I hated it. I, you know, or if they say I get bored when I'm not working hard, that's on the flip side might be a good thing. Um, and so ensure they also talk to other franchisees about the work involved required to be successful. So there you have it, the 10 traits of, of a franchisee, a successful franchisee. And I have um, also, I have this in an article form. If you're interested, just send me a message and I will send that to you. And so you can take a look at it. So those are the traits or the, the DNA. In addition to that, there's a lot of questions that we can be asking throughout the process. Things like, what does success look like to you? And what, what experience do you have with uh, tracking, having to track numbers or um, something like, you know, what, what do you, what does your family think of this idea? And, you know, there's a lot of other questions that should be asked along the way. And so it's not just about selling the opportunity. It really is about vetting and selling together and, and not even really selling, but really ensuring that there would be a fit. And again, by putting yourself in that position of being that person that's checking that, I think you actually come across as more genuine and more desirable for the franchisee than if you were just selling how great the opportunity is going to be. Oh, there's so many other things that can be done within this process and that I could say, but I'll keep this podcast to this uh, point that it's at now. I think I'll save that for another day. And also we can talk another time about how how and when to use the FDD in the process. Uh, at what point do you bring the founder in if you're not the founder on the calls um, and, and all these other things. So if you're interested in that, please do reach out to me. Let me know if that would be a topic you'd like me to talk about. And uh, we can also go into things like the profiles and how they work. There's so much more we can do before we bring a franchisee onto our team that was never going to be a fit in the first place. I hope that provided some value and some insights and some actionable ways that you can vet your, franchi your franchise prospects and try to really ensure that they're going to be a fit for your team so that everybody can grow and thrive. Because the last thing we want is when you bring a franchisee onto the team who is frustrating, you don't want to be spending all your time and energy trying to correct their behavior, pulling out the franchise agreement. Like the franchise agreement is not a tool for managing franchisees. It is a last ditch effort if you have already gone through different things to try to get the franchisee on board. And that is another podcast idea that I should probably cover at some point on 
franchisee compliance is definitely one of my favorite topics, something that I'm very passionate about. And I think there's a lot of ways that we can use a carrot approach instead of a stick approach. All right, I'm going to sign off. Thank you for listening. I'd love to hear what your key takeaways are. Please, please, please. It would be amazing if you would take a minute to rate the podcast, review it, and help me get a little bit more exposure and spread the insights, spread the word so that people end up with the right franchisees and not frustrated and bogged down. So there you have it. Go be awesome. Copyright 2020, Angela Cote, Inc. All rights reserved.